there and I'm going to restart. Here we are. Okay. So our last uh, session, um, we had we had introduced spatial modeling and um, and mobility in spatial modeling. So we'd spatially situated agents, spatially situated resources like schools, workplaces, uh, and homes, and we have movement in that space. But it was an abstract space and. Um, there's a special role to play in agent-based modeling, increasingly well supported by agent-based modeling packages. I believe with support now, not only in AnyLogic, but Repast as well, and, and I think NetLogo, um, if I'm not mistaken, for using geographical information. Geographical information you know, has uh, a lot of really compelling use cases. I mentioned these before. I won't go into them in detail, but for anyone listening to this particular kind of snippet, I, I I wanted to put up a list that you know it's worth some some thought. We we can use GIS information um, in many different ways in these models, um, as affecting the agents, as things that could be affected by the agents, um, in order to route the agents in realistic modes so they don't jump over a river, but across via the bridges to capture, you know, disparities associated with that, um, to, to identify their uh, rates of exposure to pathogens or to pollutants that are, or to crime rates or to walkability issues that are geographic. There's really a tremendous amount of insight we can get by bringing geographic data together with, with agent-based modeling. Um, Social determinants of health concerns are particularly clear points of reference where we're, you know, we're interested in, in, in how someone's uh, location um, uh, in terms of their home might expose them to, to certain uh, risk factors and um, in other cases, protective factors. Um, so um, I feel like a need to expose you, an imperative to expose you to modeling that uses geographic information. But it is a big area, and it's one that could take us all day. And I want to get started here. If there's a lot of demand for it, like if you're just eating this stuff up and you want more, I could do a bunch more tonight. Um, there have been boot camps where I spent much of a day building up a quite articulated model in GIS. But we have less time today, and I want to get to the incubator. So we'll get started, but I'm looking for feedback from you if you want to go further. Okay, so let's jump into it. So we're going to create a new model, and I'm actually tempted to leave this. Ah, we'll close it. We'll close it just to avoid tempting fate. Fine, and we'll say new model. Now, geographic information. I always like to start with a new model for it. There are ways I think you can artfully re-engineer geographic information into an existing model, but it's a little bit more um, involved um, uh, than if you start anew um, uh, and, and, and sort of move, um, move to sort of incorporate it from, from the get-go, okay? Um, so uh, I'd like to, to try that, um, okay. Uh, so I'm going to create a new model. This is going to be GIS, um, uh, GIS initial, uh, GIS simple. Bad name, but but it's okay. And we're going to have time unit of days. Okay, there we go. Days. Okay, cool. New model with a time unit of days. Okay, there we go. Boom. So now I'd like you to create a home agent class. This is going to sound familiar, right? Attempted to copy it in that other model. Uh, um, uh, I'm tempted to copy it in, but let's let's go with this. Um, okay, so we're going to add an agent type that's going to be called home. We've been through this stick before. Hopefully we can do it quickly. We know where to go with the palette. 
you know, your choices. We're going to drag in a house. And there we go. And go back to Maine. And we're going to add a population to this. Um, uh, okay. Um, so actually, uh, let's, let's not do add the population. Just define a home. Okay. Um, great. Uh, and now we're going to create a resource that's actually going to be um, a type of resource situated at known location. And uh, this, this could be any number of types of resources that we could search for. I had in mind a convenience store and a supermarket, which we can search for in GIS library. Um, I am willing to be to to you know throw caution to wind very readily here. I'm not worried about if we if someone said they wanted to use a different type of resource, like if you wanted to have a hospital or a clinic, um, or if you wanted to have schools um, uh, or parks. Um, let me know. Okay. Um, does anyone want to propose a certain type of resource that you would like me to weave into this? Anyone have a strong preference? Okay. Yeah, I was asking. My my inclination was to ask to add convenience stores and supermarkets, um, for to represent different extremes of food environments. Um, you know, resources in the food environment. But if if people had a really strong preference for something else, like having parks or, you know, representation of healthcare centers or um, schools or or clinics or something else, you know, I'm willing to 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 do that instead. Does anyone have a strong preference? You wanna you wanna see me to do this with something else besides convenience stores and supermarkets? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm seeing some hands, yeah. Yeah, um, so that's an interesting, it's a very interesting idea. Um, uh, I have ideas about how that could be approached. It, it's textured enough that, see, the problem is I don't think I could that readily in a short time tr search for truck stops because I think truck stops are, are, are a functional ca category that's probably defined as like diners and restaurants along highways. And I think there's a way to identify them, but I don't think if I just searched for them, they would show up. By contrast, I think if I search for hospitals or parks or, or, you know, record, you know, athletic facilities or something, they would show up. Okay. Yeah, I think I think yeah, we want to search for GIS databases that are built in, and so I want to try. That. Anyone else though have a request um, for for? We could do, ah, oh, okay, now you're talking. Smoke shops, uh, okay, or smoke and vape shops. That's, okay, that's really interesting. Um, let's, let's, heck, let's, let's try something, okay? I'm, I'm willing to live on the edge. Okay, fine. So we're gonna create a, I don't know what we're gonna call it. Um, a nicotine shop, <laughs> um, a tobacconist, um, tobacco outlet, okay, tobacco outlet, yeah, sure, tobacco vendor, um, um, okay, tobacco outlet, sure, um, okay, um, and uh, I'm going to add in a depiction of it as a retail store. Okay, there we go. Well, tobacco outlet. Okay. All I've done is define two agents, tobacco outlet and home. Okay. Great. Um, 
Uh, but I'm going to make this a little bit smaller just for aesthetic reasons. Hey, no, no, no. Okay, I'm going to make it. There we go. I just squeezed it. I, I squeezed in from here a little bit smaller. So there it is, a little green blivet. It's not a blivet, it's a green box. Okay, great. Okay, now our paths will diverge from our last model. We've been following a path very similar to the last model. Now we will take a radically different path. We're going back to Maine. We're going down Maine. We're going down Maine. Okay. So um, I'd like you to select Maine. Uh, I'm sorry. I'd like you to actually go here. On the right hand side, there's going to be something called space markup. Okay. And um, it's this one right here, space markup. It looks like kind of a, a, a network sort of thing on it with sort of like a lasso or something. Are, are we okay with that? Okay, uh, that'd be a space markup there. And this is the space markup um, palette. And you'll notice that it has uh, a swack of different resources for GIS. Um, from GIS maps to GIS routes to route providers, et cetera. I'm going to deal with the very basics. I'm going to add a GIS map, okay? And I'm going to drag it from there onto main canvas, okay? Okay, here we go, okay? And I'm going to drag and drop, boom. Mm, there we go, okay? There we go. And uh, I am going to double click on this map. This is where it gets really finicky. Like the overall idea here is going to carry over many packages. The specific clicks we do are quite any logic specific. Um, so let's double click on this. Okay. Now, by double clicking, you note that there's this little search box. By the way, TAs, be prepared for deploy, be on high alert. Um, I'm, I'm almost going to urge you to form a phalanx um, to, be, to be ready for rapid deployment, okay? Um, okay, so I clicked on this. Um, this is quite finicky. In the text box in the upper left, if you click on that text box, mark my words, this is really finicky. If you click on the text box, you will choose region. Do you see this? Region? I double clicked on this, this little box came up and I clicked region, okay? And I am going to choose here Saskatoon. Oh, what, what, what municipality do you wanna try? Do you wanna do Saskatoon or do you wanna try something else? What has a lot of tobacconists? Um, Tampa? Okay, Tampa, um, here, we, here we go. Uh, I'm going to say Tampa, Florida, something like that. Okay, um, and I'm gonna press enter, okay, boom. And you'll notice that it gives us um, a, a set of choices of regions with that name in it. And one of them is Tampa and Hillsborough County, Hillsborough County, Florida, okay? Um, and uh, what I'd like to do is, um, oh yeah, by the way, on Max, I see um, that sometimes you have to right click to see this point region distinction. Sometimes you have to right click on the search area, although that's probably not a Max thing, right click and probably with some analog to it. Um, uh, and, and then, um, and then somehow click back on it. I, I don't know if this is still an issue, Wade. Maybe you would know. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so I'd like you to click on this first entry, the Tampa, Hillsborough County, okay? Um, North Carolina, Amsterdam was another idea. Okay, we're, we're going with Tampa though for now. Okay, and um, 
and then I'd like you to, um, so you're, you're gonna click on it um, and right, actually I said right click on it and you will then do um, convert to GIS points region. See this? Convert to GIS point region. Okay. Maybe someone's behind. Maybe not. Someone's not feeling that they followed. Let me just rehearse this whole darn thing again. You ready? So, just in case anyone is lost, double click here, click here, say region, say Tampa. Oops, Tampa, Florida. You could probably not say Florida, but. Um, uh, and then this, and I'm going to do convert to GIS region. Here we go. Boom. Okay. Um, and you'll notice it changed color to the sort of golden color. Okay. So now it's actually represented um, in a way that is, is persistent here. It, it kind of knows about that region. Okay. By the way, it's pretty finicky. If we had searched for something that was not visible on the map, um, uh, it might not have found it. Um, so just just be aware of that. So sometimes you can double click on this map and, and drag it so the region of concern is showing. Like actually, if we had gone with Saskatoon, it might have been off here. We might have had to drag for this. Okay. So um, uh, now I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to double click on the map again, and I'm going to, oh, no, not that. Okay, double click on it, and I'm going to zoom in. Now I'm going to use my mouse. I'm going to use the mouse sort of wheelie. I'm going to, I'm going to do a wheelie the rest of the time. Um, so um, there we go. Uh, and there's Tampa. Tampa, Florida, right? There we go. And I'm gonna I'm gonna zero in even more. Um, and uh, uh, where where's where's Tampa? Here's Tampa. Um, there we go. Um, okay. So here's Tampa. And uh, so what did I do? I double clicked until it kind of became less finicky. Um, had to futz with it a little bit, and then I could drag it around, and I zoomed in. Are you okay with this? Okay. Um, and uh, that's good. Um, and uh, if the if the search box disappears, you can double click on it to see it again. Okay. Um, so it knows about this region now. Um, it's selected. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then I'm going to search for a point here, a point, and I'm going to search for, and this is where we're going to be in trouble. I'm going to search for tobacco. I'm going to see if I can find a tobacco outlet. Here we go. Let's, let's go try. Oh my God. Oh my, oh no. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, okay. So it found a, an awful lot. But um, uh, but it actually found them outside of this. Okay, so so that wasn't fully expected. Um, I was expected to be looking specifically in this, but um, uh, but it actually found some in Poland and so on. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, wait, any comments on that? Because I, I thought it normally limited it to what's shown here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Tampa. Let's just let's just no no no. Yeah. Yeah. There's a search um, search yeah properties of the map. Okay, okay, okay. I see, okay, okay. 
let's try it again. Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because in the past, I thought it, it confines the, the, what it finds to the, this is showing smoke shops all around the place, including in many different areas of the US, but also in, in overseas here. So I'm wondering if it might be because it's not finding anything in that region here by that name. What if I said, you know, smoke, smoke, what do you call it, a smoke shop? Smoke? Okay. Um, okay, I'm, I'm having, I'm having trouble here. Um, so, um, um, uh, oh, okay. Tobacco shops, I like Tina's suggestion. Tobacco shops, uh, Tampa. Let's try that. I like this. I like this. Tina, Tina had a good idea. Ah, there we go. Tina's, Tina's the queen. This is awesome. I'm not sure about the last ones, though. Um, uh, yeah, but, but, but these first ones are in Florida. These last ones, I don't think are, but there's one called the cigar. Um, that's, that's interesting. Um, okay. Okay, great. Um, uh, so we're, we're kind of in good shape here. So what I'd like to do is if you search for those and you grab these, okay, um, uh, we're going to select all of them. So I'm going to click on the first and I'm going to use the arrow keys to to go down. I think you should be also, you know, it's probably best click. And then I use the arrow keys to go down. Great. And uh, then um, right click here. Boom. Yes. Sorry. Um, so you may have a different view here of what's visible. Okay, well, Wade is there, so you can work it through with him. All right, he's quite an expert in this. Okay. So yeah, it's partly off the screen here. So, okay. So um, what I did is I selected all of them here, okay, and I right click and I'm going to say this is key. I say create agent at selected element. Do you see that? See this? Create agents at selected elements. This is the key step. Um, so I'm going to create agents that are located at each of these places found, these cigar stores. Are we okay with this? Okay, ready? Okay, here we go, tobacco outlet. Okay, um, each of those is, um, should be a, in fact, you could see them right here. Can you see them? They're created. I'm going to see if I search for a cigar shop. It's great that Tina found that. That's awesome. I'm going to search for a cigar. No cigar. Um, uh, found at least one person got that. Um, close, but no cigar. Oh, look at this. There we go. There's a bunch of cigar shops, right? Um, so I, I found a bunch of cigar shops. This is a no, oh, okay. This is not a cigar shop. It's a cider. Cigar City Tasting Room. No. Cigar Company. That sounds... Um, okay, these are like cigar companies. Um, cigar City Brewing. No. Cigar Factory, maybe. Cigar Castle. Um, so maybe we'll do that. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to say Create Agent. Here we go. Ready? Okay, uh, here we go. Oh, wait, no, no, we already have the Vincent. 
We already have to bend some time. Um, uh, we already have bend some time, so I'm not going to do bend some time. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Boom. Okay. 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 Um, cigarette. Um, I'm, I'm curious if cigarettes go up now. Um, okay. Um, smoke shop, Tampa. Oh, look at that. There's a, there's a smoke shop. Um, good times. Slow motion smoke shop. Good time smoke shop. So I'm going to create agents for these as well. But what I'm trying to communicate is sometimes you have to poke around to get all the resources you want. You know, sometimes if you're searching for healthcare facilities, you want to search for, you know, clinics, hospitals, um, physicians, offices, whatever, and maybe search under different names. Um, so we've gone and we've created smoke shops. So I searched for smoke shops. I searched for a cigar. Um, or cigar shops, and I searched for um, uh, for the um, tobacco shop, and I I went and I created a, a bunch here. Okay, the particulars are not super important, but it's worth knowing. It's a bit finicky. Havana, Havana. So I searched for Havana in Tampa. Um, I'm not sure what's being what's being proposed. Havana. Um, uh, let's let's just try Havana. Um, this Havana. Okay, I'm not going to go into this too deep. Okay. Um, okay. So we created the agents at these places. So we have a bunch of agents created at each of these locations, and um, uh, these are all of known locations. They're all at GIS based locations. Um, there we go. Um, so, so that's nice. Um, and, um, and so then I'd like to write, um, uh, and okay. And now I want to go select all of these. So select them. I can, I can in fact select them like this. How would I do that? I click here and drag down. Ready? Okay, is that okay? And then I'm going to right click and click create collection. Okay, boom. And it gives me a collection of these. Things. And I'm going to name these tobacco outlet collection. Okay. How did I do that? Well, I created these objects, I selected them, I right click, I say create collection, I create a collection, and I named it tobacco outlet collection. Okay. Um, great. Um, okay. So that's what I want. Great. Um, and I'm going to move some open. Great. Uh, is the collection like a population? Yeah, it functions somewhat like a population. Um, it's, um, I found it most easy way to sort of get the collection of these resources. Um, it, it, it would be nice if you could create a population from this. Um, and you certainly could by hand 
but this collection gives something kind of very similar to that. Uh, Wade might do it differently than than I would, but um, but I found treating them as a as a collection um, to be you know as nice. Um, okay, great. So um, so what I'd like to do is here go and add uh, right. Um, so. So I'm going to save this model. Here we go. And I'm going to add a parameter called location into home. Okay. So each home is going to have a location. There we go. In project, oops, sorry, in palette under this agent component for each home, there's going to be a thing called the location. Okay. There we go. Great. And its type is going to be other, it's going to be one of the types other than what's listed there. And what type is it going to be? It's going to be a point. It's going to be a GIS point. Okay, great. Um, okay. Um, so this is all in the theory of home, the theory of homeness, home theory. Okay. So each home will have a location and it will have a type other. So in other words, it's not one of these. And what type is it going to be? I'm going to say it's a point with a capital P. Okay, good. Okay, so I just built it, and it's a happy thing. Okay, we're getting close, ladies and gentlemen, to something kind of interesting. Okay, so we're, we're slogging through things that just have to be done once. Um, and... We'll reach a key point here in just a moment. Okay, now we have a theory of homehood, but if we were to run the model, would we see any homes? Would we see any homes? Why not? What's missing? There's no population of homes. How do we create a population of homes? Where is that created? In Maine. It's down Maine, is right. Okay, good. Um, so we're going down Maine, and we're going to go and add in a population of homes. How do we do that into Maine? Does anyone remember? What do we do? We want to add a, a population of, of uh, homes. What do we do? Drag over the home agent to here, and we will call it homes. And what do we have to do? We have to make it a population. You got it. You got it. Okay. And yeah, it's fine. It's not 100. Uh, okay. The battle starts again. Um, fine. Fine. Let's, let's, let's. Um, we'll leave that to you. Okay, great. And you'll notice that location is waiting to be specified. You see that? You see that? Okay, for location. Remember when we had age there, we could specify a distribution for age, right? When we add, when we add, you know, income, we could specify a distribution for income there, log normal. For Remember that earlier example? So for here, we can specify a location. Remember, we're going to put a formula, and it's going to use it for each agent, in this case, each home that's being created, right? Are we OK? OK, so here we go. We're going to give it a formula for how to find a home. And this is where interesting things will continue. We're going to say this dot. Tampa, that's a GIS 
multi-region. Okay, uh, Maurice says location is not occurring on Mac. Well, you, you need to check if location is in home as a, as we added this earlier as a parameter in home with, with point. And so uh, if it's there, it should be, it should be listed right here. Could someone help Maurice with that? Thanks. Okay, so this dot Tampa dot random point. Oh, this is random region inside. Okay, that's that's interesting. Uh, I was looking for random point inside. Ah. Created. Ah, there's Tampa one and Tampa two. Okay. And maybe 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 it's because of this little island. Maybe that's Tampa two. And one of these is Tampa one. This is Tampa one. You notice I, I select this, it says Tampa 1. So I don't know where Tampa 2 is, but I, I saw. Here's Tampa 1. So oh, this is a good lesson and sort of oddness. So Tampa 2 is somewhere. I'm not too worried about Tampa 2. I'm going to do it in Tampa 1. You ready? OK, so back back to setting up location. Here we go. This dot Tampa one dot good call wait. I, I, I'm glad you're clearing trail in front, in front of me. I'm going to say dot random point inside. Okay. So I'm going to find it in this area of Tampa one. In other words, this home is going to have a location in Tampa one. It's going to be located somewhere else in Tampa, somewhere in this bounding box here. Are we okay with that? Um, oh, uh, yeah, I used the one with just begin for an end for an. So, so like this. Um, like that. So, I, I, I just, th you're right that there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of choices. One of them would be this one, but, um, um, uh, it, it's sometimes just best at that point to, to type it out. Um, but if I were to do this random point, good that you're doing this. I could select it with the arrow keys and I could say enter and I could select it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're almost there. You ready? There's one final thing here. Um, it's a random point within this box. And this box is virtually all land. Um, so the chance that it ending up in, you know, this, it's not gonna end up here. It's not gonna end up in any of these areas here. Um, you notice even this is like a causeway there. Um, there is some chance it, it, it might end up in this tiny river or something like that. If you want, you could provide your own custom shape file, but we're using, you know, the sort of official public shape files. Maybe it's a houseboat sitting in this lake. Um, so I'm not going to, uh, to fight that. Um, this is overwhelmingly land area, and we're going to ride on top of that. Um, you can provide custom shape files, and we don't work with any logic with custom shape files if you want to do so. Okay, so I'm going to say in the latitude longitude. So for the initial location of, of the each home, put it in the latitude longitude, and it will be at self.location. Remember, self is for the agent being created, self.location dot get latitude for the latitude and self dot location dot get get longitude. There we go. Ready? 
Are you okay with this? Okay. Okay. Great. So what have we done? Let's let's take stock for a moment and then we'll run. What have we done? We've created a model. We added a GIS map. We searched in the GIS map to find Tampa in Florida. Um, and it found Tampa and we created a GIS region to represent Tampa. And as Wade points out, um, in fact, there was uh, a, um, there was a uh, set of two regions within it because it's not contiguous. Apparently there's a second Tampa two, which I could go find, but I'm not gonna do it at the moment. So this is Tampa one, I, I use Tampa one. Now we further through searching for points, we found a set of resources within um, Tampa, Florida that were suggestive of smoke shops, cigar shops, et cetera, tobacco shops. And we searched for them and they showed up. And for each of those, we had right clicked and we had said, create an agent. And it created for each of them a tobacco outlet agent. We had then grouped said tobacco agent, tobacco outlet agent into a collection, which is this thing here. So we have a, an enumeration. And then what we had done is uh, we, having so done, we went to home and we added in a location to home. But don't be fooled. I called this thing a point and it, was a, it wasn't one of these standard types. So I said other, and I called it this, but it doesn't know this from Jack. It could have been called Fubar or you know, Zap, Zap or something like that. Like it doesn't know this is the location um, by itself. Location is for us to know it's a point, but to make that operational that it's really its location. First of all, we have to give it a, a, a real geographic location. And secondly, we have to tell it, situate yourself at this location. Where do we do that? Well, back to Maine, we do that just like all parameters. We set the parameters for the agents in the population that sets their characteristic. And that's what we did exactly here. We set the value of that location to be a random point size. But it doesn't know this, this could be foobar, it could be zapper, it could be bar, it could be foo, it could be zap, it could be baz, it could be any number of different quacks, it could be any number of different names. It doesn't know what this is. Um, so this is not this is not inherently a location. It doesn't know this is the loc that that's what that inherently means. There's no inherent meaning to the word location. We called it location out of convenience because we know it's going to be its location but it's not operational right yet, just by doing this. Just because we get a random point inside, that doesn't mean it's actually located there yet. It may call it location, but that it doesn't, there's nothing that can force it to be location. To force it to be the location, we have to say its initial location is at, the latitude is here and the longitude is there. This is just a convenient variable for us to maintain it. There's no specifying it again. This is where we determine what the location is, and this is where we, we, we use that location to determine the latitude and tell it to set it at that latitude and to set it at this longitude. This location is not, it's just you know, something where, where we keep it around for our convenience, but this is where it has to know the latitude and longitude. We're not telling it twice, we're telling it once. Okay. Um, so there's a question, is there a reason we set up the tobacco outlets in GIS um, map on Maine as opposed to tobacco outlet agent. Yeah, because we want to have um, these outlets and this collection of outlets, they all live in Maine. They're all part of the global environment. If we have done it inside tobacco outlet, it'll be like saying each tobacco outlet has a bunch of tobacco outlets associated with it. Um, this is by putting them in Maine, it makes sure that that collection of them live in fact in Maine, okay? It's, it's, they're, they're a feature of the environment, these tobacco outlets. Um, so uh, hopefully that's helpful. Okay, so um, having, having gone through that narration, hopefully that's helpful. I'm going to go run.
the two blocks. Right click on some icon on the two blocks. There we go. Okay. Um, and there's Tampa Bay. What are these? What are these blue spots here? Can anyone tell me? Those are what? Homes, indeed. Yep, there are homes located within this region. That's right. What are these? What are these? Um, uh, and by the way, how are these homes dictated? Are they? Is, is this the actual location of a certain house? No. Where is it determined from? The location of the home was determined how? Does anyone remember? A random point inside. It just picked a random point in this boundary map. Right? I see we have a houseboat. That's cute. Um, so um, it's some random point inside this inside this area. Okay. By the way, it probably would be possible to loop through them and say, is any of them on the water? These are tobacco outlets here. Those were actually found through our searches. They're at their actual location. Because you may remember, when we found them, we said create agent at selected element. And so these are located there. Okay, they're located at the, in fact, physical location. Um, now, maybe Wade could tell me. Um, Wade, is there a way you could interrogate, like, for one of these, where in fact it is uh, geographically? Well, like presumably, um, uh, presumably um, uh, here you could get its latitude launch. I mean, programmatically you could. You could query it when you're running the model, what its latitude and longitude is, right? But I thought it might be exposed in the interface here, but maybe not. You know, maybe. Yeah. 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 It doesn't tell you it's. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wonder if you said like like this. No. Hopefully that doesn't screw it up. Okay. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have tobacco outlets and we have we have homes, and the tobacco outlets are at you know, empirical locations, the homes are random locations within this particular jurisdiction. And, you know, it'll be very readily possible for me right now. You can imagine me going through a little bit of an exercise like I did in the first part of the afternoon after I came back from lunch, where I go into a person, associate a person with a home. I have that person have a state chart which uh, maybe two state charts, one for their smoking status. Current smokers would engage in tobacco seeking behavior um, and tobacco use behavior. And maybe they'd have a larder of cigarettes or cigars. It is being a cigar city, I guess. Um, and they would, they would have a certain number left and when it was running low, they would go and procure cigars. And where would they go? They'd go to a smoke shop and they balance convenience and price and so on. And they'd go to one of these smoke shops and they go refill their larder or something like that. And um, uh, maybe some of these smoke shops, we would model as offering cartons of cigarettes at discounts and some offering just packs. And we could study the effects of regulation on you know, cigar um, uh, cigarettes and cigar use or something like that. Or we could look at the impacts of couponing in areas uh, for residents uh, going for purchasing tobacco, getting coupons from the tobacco companies online to um, so that, you know, the tobacco companies push their product by making it cheaper to counteract uh, tobacco taxes and people might go and redeem them at smoke shops. Or you could look at you know, restricting the hours of smoke shops or the availability for miners or how much they check miners and all sorts of little things that we could do with a model like this. Um, um, Kurt, Kurt Kruger did have a model like this and had exactly people's tobacco seeking behavior. Some people would drive further to get lower prices, for example. And we were doing this with the NIH, intramural researchers at the NIH 
looking at the effects of different tobacco regulations um, on tobacco seeking behavior and looking to try to anticipate how would people's behavior change in response to say added taxes on tobacco or or restrictions on whether you could sell cartons compared to packs or what have you, and seeing if people would adapt their strategies, smokers would adapt their strategies for buying or for stockpiling, for you know driving across state lines, U.S., et cetera, to get these. And you could see how a model could be the basis of it. You know, if there were interest tomorrow by demand, strong demand for GIS component, we could probably spend an afternoon just elaborating this model with tobacco seeking behavior and tobacco use and you know people quitting tobacco when it gets too pricey and others going and trying to eke out cheaper tobacco, even though it means further distance. And we'd be able to do it, you know, using tobacco locations and you know locations of smokers or whatever. But Today, we still have incubator, and I'd like to switch to that. Is that okay? So a little bit of a glimpse of GIS, but I'd like to suggest now um, with, uh, with appreciation for our, um, for our guests online that um, we will now repair to our location for teams and, uh, and we will, um, Bid uh, farewell to our to our guests online um, and reconvene with them at eight thirty tomorrow morning. Okay, so uh, hopefully that's helpful, and we look forward to working with you tomorrow morning, where we're going to be spending some time talking about things like sensitivity analysis, and calibration, and bringing together models with data. And I'll probably say a little bit on how models come together with machine learning algorithms tomorrow and, and big data as well, and why agent-based models are wonderful tools for making sense of big data. Even though they're not an AI method, they work very well with AI. That's for tomorrow. And we have a bunch more learning going on tomorrow. And by demand, if it were GIS, if that were a really strong interest, I could you know, push, push on that side and we could elaborate. But thank you for bearing with that. I'd never done one of tobacco before, and there was some significant learning. And thank you, Tina, for 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 trying different search strategies. Great. Thank you very much. Take care there, and we will see you online tomorrow. Take care.